here at the Next Economy Movement Series. This is uh, the third session. Um, although it's the second installment of our conversation around um, bridging, uh, bridging conversations around an emergent shared vision. And so, um, as I mentioned, I'm Ryan and Andrew uh, is also on the, on the call and our business partner, Kevin Bayouk will also be joining about halfway through. Um, I'm gonna quickly go over a few housekeeping and logistics. Uh, so some of you have used Crowdcast before, but if you haven't, um, just a quick overview. Um, the, the sort of a Q&A box uh, or, or a comment box on the side, which is great for um, you know, comments, resources, sharing. And then there's a little button at the bottom that says ask a question, which is better for any questions you have. Um, and you can, folks can upvote and downvote the questions. And it's just a way to, for us to keep track of, you know, what folks are asking. Um, and <clears throat> um, we'll also, this is uh, being broadcast to Facebook Live. So if you're on Facebook, you can click the link uh, in the uh, event listing and come on over to Crowdcast, where you can also chat with us. Um, this will be automatically recorded here on Crowdcast. So all of our previous sessions at the top of Crowdcast, you can click on the, the session link at the top and you can choose which, um, <clears throat> which session to watch uh, if you want to get the recording. We're also going to post them to our YouTube channel. So the List Economy YouTube channel. So broad, for, uh, broad strokes um, agenda, we're going to go into this conversation around the, the emergent shared vision part two. Um, we're going to, we like to bring people up on stage or up on screen. Uh, we find that it's much more interactive uh, and, you know, it's, it's just fun to get different voices. So if you're open to being invited up on stage, um, please uh, be ready because we might reach out to you and say, hey, would you like to come up? Because um, it, yeah, it tends to make the conversations more fun when, when you all can be uh, as interactive as we can. So um, why don't I pass it to uh, Andrew, who's going to talk about uh, a little bit of the overview of the session. Thanks, Ryan. So just to recapitulate, um, some of the framing around these conversations that we've mentioned in the past, um, you know, um, we, uh, we're not, you know, coming to this conversation as experts. Our intention is, uh, you know, to not make this really at all about us, um, but to make it about all of us. And uh, we want to just be transparent and vulnerable that we're learning uh, through this process and might not get, get this thing right, right off the bat, but hopefully we can all be somewhat patient with the emergent process and support carrying this conversation to a place that really serves uh, the moment and serves the movement. And uh, just a brief introduction um, to the series again, um, if you go to uh, lifteconomy.com and under our resources tab, you'll see uh, the hashtag next economy movement series. There's a little bit more of an introduction there that you can check out um, uh, in greater depth if you like. And so we see ourselves as playing a sort of organizing and convening role with these conversations. And you know how we're thinking about this is that there's, uh, um, let's see, we want to kind of be a mirror to the movement and, and, and connect voices and uplift ourselves collectively. Um, you know, we want to know what we want to tap the, the brain trust of our movement and, you know, get uh, everyone's thoughts on some of these questions that we're thinking about. And we see ourselves as learning together with, um, well, learning together. And so our question is kind of like, how can we grow and, um, how can we grow or bring together a more powerful movement for the next economy? And there's tons of folks that are thinking about this already. We're not wanting to duplicate efforts. And we, um, we also especially wanna welcome uh, folks who may maybe feel like they're quote unquote new uh, to the conversation or inexperienced in this idea of the quote unquote next economy uh, for which there are many names, many ways of describing it. And, just wanting to acknowledge that we're uh, folks in the conversation are at different stages in our journey and we want to make sure that everyone feels uh, included and welcome. So please don't hes hesitate to add questions to the queue and, and upvote and downvote them and post comments in the chat. 
Um, also, you know, I want to, I want to, um, yeah, just take a moment to slow down, um, and acknowledge the moment with, uh, George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and, uh, you know, the social uprisings, um, in the wake of, uh, a long line of events um, <laughs> um, around the U.S. and around the world. So, these this is a space. Uh, our intention for this space is is a space for conversations that help us to move forward collectively, um, so that we can uh, that that can help us be ready for these moments and help help us to shift toward a future we all want for ourselves and for the next seven generations. Um, so just wanting to hold space for this moment, for grieving, for anger, sadness, hope, um, and invite in, invite that in as it arises for you, um, either through the chat, you know, or in questions or, um, yeah, this is a very much a two-way conversation. So, um, I trust that that will come forward emergently and um, building on the conversation from last time, we wanted to return to Chuck's question. Um, Chuck, Chuck asked a question in the chat, Chuck Brown, and uh, um, he inquired, can, can you all go deeper on the topic of organizing and network building? Uh, particularly curious whether this is a time to be consolidating our many next economy networks and alliances, um, or maybe coming together to establish a platform from which we're building power collectively. And so the question stands, how do we, how do, we do this effectively? How do we do this effectively? And so um, the way, you know, we're, we're trying to like open, have a, an open-ended process around, around in this conversation and, uh, the way that we're thinking about it is thinking like, okay, well, we know that there's a ton of really amazing next economy uh, aligned movements and organizations, you know, uh, New Economies Coalition, uh, the B Corp movement, Zebras Unite, Movement for Black Lives. And um, many of us in these conversations have involvement with one or more of these groups, but those groups, um, like some of, some of those groups might not be working, um, uh, you know, on the same things necessarily or in conversation or effectively communicating with one another. Um, and, and yet we know that there are these observable and self-evident commonalities and areas of overlap between uh, many of these efforts, many of these uh, movement organizations. And so we're kind of thinking that perhaps surfacing these areas of overlap into a common framework can help our um, you know, next economy movement in recognizing opportunities for stronger and increasingly effective collective action. Um, so we're thinking kind of listing out some of these movement organizations and systems change enterprises engaged in um, the business of repair can give us some starting ground to begin to map that out. Um, so kind of wanting to like, um, in doing that, explore the question of how do we bridge how do we bridge um, some of these efforts? And um, like maybe in there is like, um, you know, a quest questions around like, do we need to be in 100% in alignment to work together? And we're thinking that maybe surfacing some of these areas of overlap can uh, be an emergent process that um, creates, uh, that, that reveals the areas um, where we are aligned. So I wanna invite folks to maybe start um, listing some, you know, next economy aligned movements, movement organizations, systems change organizations in the chat. Um, you know, some that we've thought of are Common Future, Social Enterprise Alliance. I mentioned, I think, B Corp and Zebras Unite, Movement for Black Lives, New Economies Coalition, um, Rising Majority, We All, the Wellbeing Economy Alliance. And, um, and I think that as we begin to list these out, we can kind of start thinking about are there existing relationships between these organizations? And I imagine the conversation will flow from there. 
This is great. I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat here. So how do we best create a space for ongoing emergent process? Yeah. And, you know, as folks are putting in their comments to the chat, um, you know, one thing, uh, yeah, Shakti rising. Um, one thing that I've been struggling with a little bit in relation to movement building is this, this idea of the 100% alignment, the purity test, you know, if any of you listened to, to Sean King had a, a, a episode yesterday or maybe it was Friday about how he's had to work with Republicans. Um, you know, Ahmaud Arbery uh, is, you know, like the governor's Republican, both senators are Republican, the city council in the area he was shot is Republican, the district attorney is Republican. Um, and so he's like, I can't just, wait to work with Democrats uh, and, um, you know, sort of to, in order to move these things forward, like you have to work with people who are there, who are in power. And so we can't just be to Ahmaud Arbery's family, can't be like, you know what, no, nah, we don't work with Republicans. Like, he, like the man needs justice, you know? Um, and so, and he was saying it's even weird because in Louisville, he's also working with the family of Breonna Taylor and um, Louisville's got, or Kentucky has a Democratic governor and Louisville has a Democratic mayor. And there was a Democratic um, uh, attorney on the case and they've got nowhere. They've got no movement within the, the Democrats. And, uh, you know, they've got, it, it's actually been in some ways counterintuitively easier to work with some of the Republicans. And so, He's saying like, we have to be able to work with both sides and we can't just be a hundred percent ideological on like our movements. And so that's really stuck with me is like, what are these movements that we could stitch together and find those common areas of overlap? And I think that's the bridging component. Um, but, uh, but Andrew, do you want to speak to anything that's coming up in the chat or? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I just mentioned a couple other organizations, Cooperation Jackson, Movement Generation, also wanted to give a shout to Movement Generation's incredible event uh, later today called Course Correction, which folks really should check out. Um, um, Allison mentioned that uh, she's working at the California Public Banking Alliance, and they're looking how to collaborate with Black Lives Matter and ideate around reparations. I love that. Um, yeah, and Allison, if you want to come on screen and talk about some more of that, um, let us know in the chat. We'd love to have you up. That sounds amazing. Yeah. No uh, pressure. Uh, uh, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> Allison, that, yeah, a lot of great stuff. So just, I'm, like, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, and I'm also noticing uh, Chuck. Uh, Chuck joined us. Um, who helped us feed this conversation around some of the network building components he's working on. Um, so uh, we'll see if Chuck and or Allison, maybe Allison, I'll invite you and then you can decide whether to come up on screen. Um, and uh, I know Chuck's, Chuck's, Chuck's down to talk, so I'll get, I'll get you on too, Chuck. Um, but yeah, I think this idea of like, um, and then while folks are sort of deciding, you know, another sort of example along this idea of like bridging across differences, um, you know, um, it's sort of like the, uh, we, I, I interviewed John A. Powell from, um, uh, oh, there's Allison. <laughs> hey, Allison. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to hear more. Um, about what you're up to and like, you know, especially your uh, work with the Public Banking Alliance and collaboration. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I should say that that's not anything that I can speak of on behalf of the CPBA right now. I mean, we definitely yeah. are the, the Black Lives Matter movement, but my own ideas around reparations and even, you know, using the term and what strategies are for, first and foremost up for collaboration and then as, as an alliance would need to be sort of approved as the way going forward. But we do plan on having um, a statewide town hall coming up very soon to talk about what 
because it is at the heart of it. It's really how to how to protest Wall Street and defund Wall Street and bring our money back where it belongs. Um, you know, where we can acknowledge that our futures are ours to own, not somebody else's. And so within that, too, of course, the public banking would allow more opportunity to be able to invest in things like affordable housing. And, and you know, what we had done in Sonoma County, I don't want to hijack the conversation at all. No, you're not. You're not this is, yeah, wanting to hear from you. Please. OK. Um, Sonoma County had recently um, helped to get there. It was a joint effort of a lot of activist organizations. Um, to divest money and, and have the county adopt a socially environmentally responsible investment portfolio to um, to divest from detention centers and to divest of course from fossil fuels as well but within the since since that was adopted last uh, might, might have been December until now 85 million dollars more have been invested into fossil fuel banks so um, that's that's obviously a concern but as we try so there are a lot of strategies that although we can say these are things that we want to do until we define return on investment as having measurable community benefit outcomes for one and in order to hold investment managers accountable and until we create positive solutions in order to have them divest, invest their money in, we can divest, but then we don't know where to put it. We can divest from Wall Street, but then where do we put it? We put it in Chase, JP Morgan Chase, because we, you know, which is the, the worst fail rate on investing in extreme fossil fuels, right? And, and it all has to do with the same thing. These are integrated. We can't see any movement all movements that support life and the ability for life to thrive in all of its diversity are united and um and ultimately that's that's where we're coming from um so what can we do and it's a pretty exciting place and i'm a high school teacher and i teach regenerative economic design and i've written up courses to teach awesome. as a process as a process wow. that begins with nonviolent communication as a, in, order, in order for us to really come to terms with understanding our needs and wants and desires and how those can harmonize and synergize with others, but we need to feel safe. So it needs to be a trauma-informed process along the way. And um, when we can get past scarcity mindset, we start getting into increasing cognitive capacity. And um, the impacts of scarcity mindset also are an emotional. And so when we're talking about outcomes in schools, we know evidence-based, evidence-based practice is that emotional well-being equals cognitive well-being and, and higher academic performance. So that's that's what the class is designed to have as an outcome. And understanding economics as being a subject that can be supportive of regenerating life instead of life being an externality is, you know, the approach that I like to take. And would look forward to collaborating with you guys. I've used your podcast in my courses for years. Wow. So, yeah. You're like the best high school teacher ever. <laughs> like, I would love to take your high school course. It's a good, yeah, um, looking forward to spreading it. Anyway, yeah, so that's what I have to share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And yeah, I'm just, I'm like, and it sounded like, is that, I'm mean, just curious. You you typed in you typed in the chat peace profits. Is that part of is that the program that you're running? That's kind teaching? of the brand name that I've put as I've been teaching uh -huh. and hoping to yeah yeah. So I tell my students that my bias is we all have them, and my bias is to discuss how we can design for peace and prosperity and regeneration and well being for all. And, um, and each community could do that. And each community can have different definitions of what that looks like. So cultural regeneration, for instance, is also on the table as defining. And that's, you know, yeah, that measures the success and the outcomes to keep on track with diverse input. So, uh, yeah. And I'm curious, like, to, just to get your thoughts on, on the kind of the question of, like, how how like what would you see as a way to continue to um kind of create an emergent alignment across you know across all of our movement organizations 
doing the systems change work to you know help us get to I do wonder, let's ideate about that together. I do wonder yeah. what Zoom opens up for us. I've thought about for a long time providing teacher education programs and um, also to empower Sunrise Movement, for instance, and have a youth-led, you know, just just training and providing the, 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 the platform for the conversation. And, and it, we know, uh, my, my master's is in public health, you know, and understanding how behavior change happens, it happens in social networks. Because it happens when we have mutual support from other people, which we know. And so creating those those teams to think and 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 learn how to be vulnerable and be courageous enough to share. Shakti Rising, I just got off the phone with them and um, they're talking about that process. Love it. Uh, that's one of the primary causes of suicide. We have so much internalized about our value of ourselves regarding what our financial situation looks like and what that security looks like because we have a, a merit-based um, economy. And, uh, and so getting to those places, getting students to be able to share, getting people to be able to openly dialogue and be uncomfortable to make those those mistakes of the, the white woman who, with internalized racism, right, fucking up and being willing to to do that to be able to have the conversation to learn to listen and, um, and move together so how do we do that i i have lots of <laughs> lots of ideas, right okay. but i mean but i yeah what can we do well definitely inviting you to cool. well maybe yeah maybe i'll bring up chuck now um allison will continue that conversation how's that sound Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So okay. bow out. Okay. Yeah, definitely want to invite you to, to throw in some of those ideas into the chat um, yeah. or as a question and people can upvote and downvote however you see fit. Yeah. So I invited uh, Mr. Chuck Brown. Um, and then um, looks like Isabel was saying that she's also working on something in San Diego, similarly creating a community hub mm -hmm. for all the other specialized groups and individuals. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, Chuck can't join yet. All right. So maybe, um, maybe we could bring up, uh, maybe is, I mean, I'd be curious to hear what Isabel's working on in San Diego. Um, so let's see if, uh, let's see if we can get Isabel up. Chuck's like, I'm on the, I'm on the bus, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, while, um, you know, while we're inviting other folks up, Andrew, do you want to speak at all to um, some of the sort of broader, like, you know, within the new power book, you, you, the dynamic that you're reading does mm -hmm. it say anything about like effective movement building strategies or i'm wondering because you've been really deep into that um piece i'm wondering if you could speak to the how that might look in this framework as well yeah um sure so um actually in uh some of the early uh we had sent out a survey around kind of starting to co-create what ultimately led to this series of conversations. And there was um, a wonderful person whose name escapes me right now who recommended uh, the book, New Power. So I checked it out, read it. Um, and- KK from Hong Kong. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, so there's, that, that book is kind of nuancing um, what they call old power, um, which is sort of like centralized top down kind of command and control versus new power which is kind of more um you know grassroots emergent crowd based um you know um that you know things that range from large institutions in the gig quote unquote gig economy you know lyft uber type things all the way to you know the equity regulation crowdfunding um or you know, things like hashtag Giving Tuesday, 
and there's um yeah part of what they share in that is um something called the uh, participation scale. And so it's kind of like, it, it kind of connect, that participation scale kind of connects to how we've approached this conversation um, in the sense that like, you know, we were initially thinking of, oh, let's do, you know, an online summit in the traditional model of that's just really consumption, but rather we wanted to, that's kind of like maybe more older paradigm is just consumption, but how can there be ways for greater participation and engagement so that it's something that's more of like a for us, by us dynamic. Um, and um, that's something you can Google easily, the uh, participation scale in new power. And yeah, it's involved like sharing things out, uh, maybe funding, maybe co-owning on the far end of it. Um, but that's also in in some ways, you know, part of how we're holding these conversations is, you know, trying to listen and to engage, you know, how folks are inspired to um, engage and participate in the conversation. Um, and, you know, maybe there's some things that will emerge, you know, in that scope around this. So that's kind of um, some of the thoughts that I'm holding around that right now. Um, I can yeah. share this my screen really quickly to see if we could get the uh, get the new power um, piece up. So, is this showing up at all, Andrew? It is. Yeah. Let me take myself off the screen, and then um, it'll be bigger. There we go. I can also just focus the screen on it. That works. Yeah. So you. Why don't you describe what folks are seeing here? Yeah, thanks. So the visuals are always helpful, visual learners in the crowd. Um, so what they kind of describe as old power behaviors, there's actually another chart that kind of juxtaposes old power values with new power values in the same way that this is um, juxtaposed. And so they're sort of like complying or consuming um, is like, you know, consumers, consumption, these are it's like regular words in our, you know, business as usual lexicon um, versus, you know, opportunities for, you know, things that, you know, quote unquote, go viral, right? Um, sharing, affiliating, adapting, um, you know, we share things on social media, we share things, you know, through channels like this, um, through, you know, next economy media organizations, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, um, affiliating is is more in the is kind of getting into the space somewhat of what we're observing of all of these affiliations with incredible movements. Some folks with multiple affiliations and movements. Some you know dedicated to one, um, but affiliated with movements. And um, you know there are a lot of efforts going on around you know creating a movement of movements, and um, so. I think, yeah, I think maybe maybe implicit in this conversation is um, beginning to create an emergent uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, an emergent vision um, across the uh, commonalities between these movement organizations with, that folks are affiliated with. Um, and then, yeah, adapting. Um, helping helping to kind of co-create things and, and being in, in sense and respond mode rather than, you know, this is just Andrew and Ryan and, and Kevin on this end and we're like, you know, quarterbacking this whole thing. Um, but then funding is like, you know, what are opportunities to maybe put money in a pot and collectively allocate that. Um, and uh, yeah, co-producing. We're already kind of doing that to some extent in this context with some of you coming up. Thank you again, Allison, today um, for coming up and sharing. And you know, I think we're also envisioning there, you know, more opportunities to, you know, make this not just something that we're holding. Um, there's a saying from the New Power Framework that if it's if it doesn't move without you, it's not a movement. So just kind of internalizing that, and then yeah, shaping, co-owning. Those are continuing in that direction. Hopefully that helps to mm. share some of the thinking that's happening um, in relationship to 
to this, these, this series of conversations. Yeah. I love this idea of co-owning both in, you know, sort of the business context, like, you know, we're big proponents of worker-owned cooperatives, um, you know, multi-stakeholder cooperatives, et cetera. Um, and, uh, okay, it looks like Chuck says he's ready, so I'll invite you up, Chuck. And, you know, it's also, I think with this framework showing that co-owning, co-ownership um, and shaping of a movement can actually make the movement stronger. So it's not just, um, there's a CEO and executive who's like leading us and we're just sort of following it. You know, in a way, um, there was a great, hey Chuck, there was a great, uh, there was a great um, podcast interview with Tana Hesse Coates um, and uh, on the Ezra Klein show. And he was talking about how Black Lives Matter might actually be, um, uh, Black Lives Matter might actually be the most successful movement um, he's ever seen uh, because, you know, you had Des Moines, Iowa protesting and um, you had, uh, you know, Omaha, Nebraska, and then like London and Paris. And so um, I, it seems like one of the, if we're thinking about the new power framework of like co-ownership, perhaps that is part of the reasons of its success is there's not like a CEO of Black, of Black Lives Matter being like, all right, and today we will do this and tomorrow we'll do this. It's like everyone has co-ownership. Um, and um, so it's like another evidence point for, for sort of like, we need more of that. Um, and so Chuck, um, yeah, where, where are you? How are you feeling about all this? Any questions coming up for you, thoughts? I mean, um, you'd put some stuff in the chat around like the sort of like the bottom of the funnel, top of the funnel. I'm just kind of curious where, where you're sitting with this piece. Yeah, no, I, so I really I appreciate the the chance to come and share. And, and Andrew, definitely not trying to bring you back down the earth or like it, and whatever that whatever that even means, right? I think you're exactly on point with everything you were just discussing. So um, you know, I'm always learning so much uh, from y'all. Um, and yeah, even um, I mean, there's so many different frameworks, I guess, and ways to think about it. And I'm I'm not even going to try and uh, present as like an expert uh, on this at all, because from one aspect, you know, there's okay, so there's top of the funnel and there's bottom of the funnel, and we can organize folks in both sides and trying to like, how do we? Is there a role for? Uh, we talked about social enterprise alliance, which is like a hat that I wear. Is there a role to play to sit sit in the middle and, and to bridge those connections so that you know transformation can come? But other folks would think about it in terms of, of circles, right? And like just a series of concentric circles. And so we're trying to bring folks who are sitting on the outside, like closer and closer to to the core, right, of where that that movement is. And mm -hmm. and uh, and I think uh, to the point you know you were just making, Ryan, too, about this is how we invite folks into co leadership, right, uh, of, of this moment. And then and also folks are inviting us in too, right, because we, you know, it's uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to, to say exactly where we sit uh, in terms of those circles. Um, I think for a lot of folks, especially, you know, uh, white presenting folks, you know, like us, uh, Ryan, that, that there is always more and more layers that we're, we're uncovering, right? And trying to understand how we can be better, better advocates um, in that way, allies and, and, and further than allies to be partners, right? To really put, put skin in the game, put our, put our bodies on the line. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just really appreciating the conversation. And, uh, and like I said, the, you know, the work that we're trying to do and, uh, you know, I'm really just trying to deepen my practice uh, as an organizer, really thinking about trying to focus on, on the Bay Area specifically right now and, and folks who would be interested in coming together and, and like what, what is like a platform, you know, for actually building a just economy uh, look like. I know a lot of people have really powerful ideas, have already been doing this work for a long time, right? And, uh, and so trying to figure out, you know, what, what role can we play to be uh, really just magnifying, right? And amplifying other folks. Uh, building connections where they uh, may have struggled to get connection, like this is again something we can do. We can leverage our privilege, right, to to create access for folks, um, uh, so that you know the the real leaders of this movement can can take the stage. Um, so so yeah, I mean that, that's on my mind uh, a lot. And uh, you know, and I see like y'all with with Lyft, right? All right, you're you're in that that kind of that bottom of the funnel, you know. Like I, I really see y'all are so deeply connected to um, just some this amazing you know work, and and you're you're always lifting them up and supporting them. So just a lot of like you know gratitude for you all, and and appreciate being part of these conversations. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, I really appreciate that. One thing in particular, Chuck, you know, in your organizing work, 
that you're doing around social enterprise alliance, E Corp, conscious capitalism, just Bay Area organizing, what are some of the challenges or like what are you seeing as like the blocks to it being more stitched together across those different movements? Like what do you what is some of the main bottlenecks that you see? I mean, uh, I mean, there's, there's, so there's the typical ones, right. Which is just, uh, there's like a capacity issue, right. So like how, how much are folks just like, you know, when the, the work that they're doing, I mean, social enterprise Alliance, all volunteer led org, conscious capital, all volunteer. And when I talk about even like B lab, it's really like, it's like the B local group, all volunteer led group. Right. And so mm -hmm. folks are, they're really passionate about the work and they're, I mean, I, I'm, been amazed by the response, right? The energy, I think that folks are looking for ways, right? That they can step in to the moment and play some kind of role. Um, but they, but they're, in terms of the commitments they made to these these particular groups and organization, it's, it's limited still, you know? So it's so finding a way like, and that's why I know too, or why I kind of feel in my heart that it's not, it's not really for us to take leadership of it, right? But just how do we form a coalition to support each other's capacity and then to bring in real like, you know, uh, leadership uh, because we, you know, I, I really still, I see my own role in this is just kind of getting the ball rolling, right. And like getting folks together. And then once the momentum builds that, you know, that I can step into a proper support role, which is really where I should be. Um, mm -hmm. I think in the other aspect of it, you know, I mean, let's, let's be honest, right. I mean, the egos are, are still, still at play here. You know, there's still some folks who say like, well, uh, you know, Chuck, why are you, telling everybody about this. Like, are you, are you talking to everybody about, you know, could, you, aren't you worried that somebody else could just, they just take the idea and go to their members and just like roll with that idea. And like, for me, that's, it's just not, it's not an issue. I'm not, I'm not worried about uh, competing with other folks who, who, who like want to do the work. We should all be doing it. Right. Um, so, so folks feel like they got uh you know, can build, build a really strong coalition, a really strong value proposition to organize their communities. Like, go for it, man. Like, absolutely. Uh, so I, I would much rather do it together, right? And coordinate as much as we can. But uh, but it's not about being uh, protective of like some idea that I had, which is not original <laughs> whatsoever. So, uh, so yeah, that's, I, that's what I'm thinking about is it's, it's, you know, capacity issue and then, and then, you know, still managing, still managing EOS. But I'm not as worried about it, though, for folks in this space they're they're, they're you know uh it, it's not as much of an issue as it is in other <laughs> contexts i think yeah is isabel gave you a plus 100 on the ego <laughs> <laughs> yeah i it's mean so funny, it is like, it is, right <laughs> yeah like in um the conscious capitalism book that came out in like 2012 or 2013 john mackey was saying like we don't need b corporations there's they're like they're dumb and then like you know, B corporations like, well, we don't need constant. And so it's like all ego, like that's one of the reasons why some of these movements are not talking to each other. It's like, we have this attachment to our brand is the way it should be. And like, in like sort of, um, everyone should be under our, our sort of banner. And um, I don't know, maybe that's part of the, you know, maybe speaking to systems, that's part of the, like colonial <laughs> mindset of like, I need my flag to like sort of, be the one that we're all sort of following yeah 100 percent. i mean we're all socialized into you know we're all functionally miseducated <laughs> into yeah. the system in order to be a part of it um and yeah I, th I mean i think it's like also just acknowledging the trap the many traps that we're navigating all the time that being one of them and just you know presencing the the divide and conquer strategy working <laughs> effectively yeah. um yeah so like you know, but transcend, you know, presencing those traps, um, how can we overstand? <laughs> how can we step beyond and, uh, yeah, surface some of the emergent areas that we're all working behind? I think, like, one of the things that comes to came to mind as you were talking about that, Chuck, is um, again, this new power book is, you know, just part of my thinking around this right now. Um, and, uh, some of the examples that they talk about in there is like, I think I mentioned, you know, Giving Tuesday um, or the Ice Bucket Challenge or something like that, where it's like, <laughs> I know this is a silly example, but um, but uh, like, what are ways that it, it, you know, similar to hashtag, you know, Black Lives Matter and, you know, these movements that are highly decentralized, what are areas where we can, you know, you know, collectively say, 
whatever that thing is, hashtag next economy, I don't know, you know, whatever, whatever that thing is, um, or symbol or something that people can kind of remix and um, make their own, but that we have some shared framework that we're all kind of like looking to and seeing, okay, well, you know, folks are aligned in this, this, and this, and this. Um, and uh, I don't know, I think that, I guess I'm, I'm wondering if there are ways and where we can kind of circumvent the, the ways that we can kind of typically get hemmed up in the, in, with it. I guess I'm going into solutioning around uh, some of the barriers that you present. So maybe I'll step back. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, I really appreciate that. And maybe if, if I can just I'll do a last point, then I want, obviously want to give space to, to other folks. I think that that issue of like language continues to be a real struggle, right? And so, so uh, we were talking about conscious capitalism and like B Corps and then like I'm in this like social enterprise camp and whatnot. You know, I was talking to uh, a young woman who's actually trying to study like social enterprise ecosystems in like different parts of the world. And she she asked like, okay, where'd you find out, first find out about social enterprise and why don't you think more folks are coming into it? You know, it's, it's, it's like so inextricably tied to like, um, like access to higher education, right? And so like, like a lot of the, so much of the stuff is being uh, uh, held in like academia and, and things like that. And like, that's, and of course that's where they try to capture like the thought leadership on this stuff and like put it forward. And some folks are doing amazing stuff in that, in that space. But from another perspective, it's uh, it's like this big institutional barrier, right? And it's uh, and and like we're so now caught up on the the like nuances of what's what's a social enterprise or what's a B Corp, what's a regenerative business model look like? And so like I think uh, if we can figure out ways to let go of that <laughs> a little bit and not get so hung up, uh, or let somebody else decide, frankly, like what what this uh, the terminology is, um, that would be probably a healthy way for us to to come together. Uh, but yeah, so that's the last point. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, Chuck. So great to have you up, Chuck. Yeah. I mean, we could see it's up there too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, I'd love to keep Chuck I'm up hanging out. Here. I'm hanging out. So. <laughs> Isabel, Isabel votes that you stay up. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I think I joined last time. My camera wasn't working, so it's working mm. this time. Um, yeah, I'm kind of in the earlier stages of, I guess, where Social Enterprise Alliance was. Um, I'm. I think I mentioned last time, just exploring like what is the landscape here in San Diego? That's where I am um, around. Yeah, like the terminology, it's super hard to wrap my head around of like, what, you know, what is the accepted common language? Um, like, for example, one thing I think we're still struggling here is like, there is a subset of people who understand what sustainability means, meaning like, not just environment, but holistic systems. And then there's a subset of people who are still, you know, stuck maybe like 20, 25 years ago. Of, uh, it's just recycling renewable energy. Um, so it's just one example, but what I'm trying to figure out here is like, who are the people, who are the organizations? What are they doing? What are their values and how do we come together? It doesn't seem like there's one obvious place where you can find this information, these ideas, um, the people and, and meet people. Um, at least not obvious to me. So I'm I'm at least kind of exploring and figuring that out now. And if there is a need, creating that space. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, and it sounds like you're maybe starting to do that work already. Do you want to talk about a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, so for me, I guess my journey started, I think back at least in January um, from more intentional space of like finding out what a B Corp was and impact investing and all these different things. Um, and wanting to find more, just reaching out to people because basically no one in my professional networks knew what any of this was or kind of knew, but they still, you know, they're like, oh, okay, well, here's a nonprofit you can talk to. Um, but I wanted something more than that. And so just been kind of personally exploring who the different people are here um, <laughs> I would love to. Um, yes, please, please email me. I'll, I'll put my email in the, in the chat. Um, like I just joined a local nonprofit called Tory Project, um, started up here last year. They run a boot camp for anyone who wants to be a social entrepreneur for 30 days. And it's completely free to provide access to anyone who's interested. Um, so no, you know, no holding back for any reason. Um, but yeah, I guess just, just from my personal desire to reach out to people and learn more about what's going on in my community, I found that it's very difficult unless you're someone who has a lot of time uh, to, to reach out and you know has the courage to reach out to individual people not in your networks. 
and make those connections. And not everyone has that um, ability or privilege um, or desire. <laughs> Maybe they're just kind of interested and not really knowing. So um, kind of like what Chuck was saying, I think it's basically a funnel, right? There's people who I'm trying to capture would broadly be interested in getting them inspired to, to want to learn more and whatever specialties they want to learn more about, making it easy for them to find that information and also connecting with other people who are working on the ground and, and leading um, and then funneling down to the specialties where, you know, there are the entrepreneurs, the business owners, the thought leaders um, and getting them connected with each other to have these more in-depth conversations um, irrelevant to our community as well. So mm -hmm. I'm still figuring out, yeah, like who who's gonna come, who wants to engage also, especially everything's weird right now with COVID. Um, I think a lot of the people who are in the social enterprise space are kind of really still kind of deal with COVID right now and, and all the, the fallout from that. Yeah. So. Yeah. What's coming up for, for you, Ryan or Chuck? In response to that? Yeah, I mean, so needed. Um, just, you know, and, it, and it's interesting with COVID, I'm wondering if there's actually more, I don't know, there's like, I can't tell if it's better or worse to get more connected with people. <laughs> I mean, definitely there's like the human element. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's like where I'm sitting is like, how does this actually affect some of the movement building work um, now that it's, you know, um, you know, not sort of, uh, hey, let's go have coffee at someone's house, but it's like, let's have a, a digital chat. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm kind of like what you guys were saying earlier. It's for me, very open-ended. I'm here to yeah. help however people need mm -hmm. help. And I don't want to assume what that looks like. So I'm reaching out to people and saying, let's at least meet each other because a lot of you don't know, we know of each other's existence, which is a problem, I think. Um, and then I just want to hear like, what are people struggling with? Like, do you need more awareness of your brand, more donations or something like that? Or do you need more ideas? Like whatever it is, um, I would love to connect you to the right person who can help you. Yeah. Well, one thing we could do, and then Chuck, you know, folks who are listening, one thing we could do is so Andrew and I have been talking and our business partner, Kevin, have been talking about um, doing some whiteboarding on the next session, uh, uh, you know, it's sort of like in real time, putting some concepts together. Um, and, you know, one of those steps could be which orgs are you currently involved with now? You know, like, so at Lyft, we're like, we're part of we all, um, we're part of, you know, no folks in common future. Um, I'm, you know, we're a certified B corporation, but almost like each of us on these calls can list out the like different groups we have a foothold in. Um, and as a way of mapping out, like just even these, the network that we have here. Um, and I think that could be a really interesting starting place for like, just like you were saying as well, like we don't even know what each other are doing or which networks we're associated with. I think that could be a really interesting first step. Um, sorry to cut you off there, Chuck, just uh, to throw it out there. No, not at all. I mean, uh, the plus one to everything you just said. I mean, because I think uh, for a lot of us too, we're, we're showing up at an inter intersection of different communities, right? Who are trying to do do this work, and uh, but it's it's hard to understand, right? I think what where those communities do overlap, and then where we can come in. So so I love that, Ryan. Uh, certainly, that's something that we're trying to do more of with uh, social enterprise, specifically focusing on San Francisco Bay Area. Like we try to we're trying to cultivate like a new digital community where folks are really sharing, and you can you don't have to be an SEA member in order to participate in that, and so things of that nature. But I don't want to like. Also, I don't want to overemphasize like SEA, right? There's lots of stuff and like Lyft is amazing. And is about actually what I wanted to call out originally is like, like here you are, like you're showing up right now, right? Like you're in this conversation, you're participating in this amazing platform, right? That Lyft has put together. Uh, you're coming in, you're connecting with folks like on the chat, you know? So so like kudos to you for for showing up, right? And I think we're all trying to figure out how we can best play a role and, uh, and you know, you're stepping into it. So 
So just uh, I'm going to take, take solace in that. And um, and then, yeah, I'm really appreciating Ryan's uh, suggestions as well and how we can can map out those connections that we that we all share. So one thing I want to, I guess, ask is towards the, the overarching theme for today is with coming to an emergent shared vision between different orgs, like you're saying, Chuck, there's some egos involved. How how has SEA overcome that or tried to overcome and bring people together? Like, how do you establish a common vision? Uh, what What's emerging for me right now is just humility. <laughs> just trying, just like always like being really grounded in, in humility, right? Because if we don't, if we don't have that, then how can we talk about issues around ego that anybody else might hold, right? And um, that, so, uh, Part of that is right is like leading with the conversation. And so if we want, we want to come out, we want to build this coalition, right? Like who are the other partners? What are the networks do we you know, want to bring in and involve? That I always said, I've got to hold that message right? of not being overly protective of like this being somehow like my idea, right? Or something that SEA like wants to lead to to never hold that like tightly because that's that's what that's what activates like this our, our individualism right and like folks would desire to be recognized as the leaders like in in the in the movement and like for that it's not um that's not important to me it can't be it can't be overly important to me right in order to uh invite others folks in and just uh understanding that this this is about co-leadership this is about co-creation um it's that it's that or nothing right or else there there is no there is no movement um I'm, we you know, let's see. I, I don't want to get into a whole story. Like re recently, we we had to do a lot of organizing just within um, SEA, frankly, to to kind of change the way we operated at a national level. Um, it had become a very top down uh, organization, and I think had had become quite disconnected, frankly, with uh, with work that was going on on the ground. And so, so just quickly, like basically, there's a national nonprofit social enterprise alliance. And then there's regional chapters or like 17 chapters across the country kind of representing different regions. And like that connection had been completely broken. SEA wanted to dissolve all the chapters. I mean, it was, a, it was a really tough situation. And, but there was also an amazing opportunity for chapter leaders from all across the country to get together and said, this is an opportunity for us to actually create a different kind of organization, maybe to get back to what the original vision for this alliance actually was. And, uh, you know, again, it was not, nobody owned that, you know, that, that movement, right? And like all the chapters had their own priorities for how they wanted to serve the region, but we just knew that we wanted a bottom-up organization that to be that or nothing or, or to, to go solo if we had to. And so, you know, sometimes it's just about capturing a moment, you know, too. And, uh, and also understanding that, you know, you'll start, we can start with a big group, but as you start moving along, some folks are gonna drop out, other folks are gonna come in and uh, and to be uh, and to be okay with that, you know, frankly, because not not everybody's going to take that journey with you. Mm. I don't know if that's helpful. Is it all, you know, it's a it's a it's all process, right? It's all a work in process. It is helpful though because so my my background, I come from biotech and very traditionally rooted systems, very traditionally rooted mindsets, and so um, even just getting exposure to some of the more software and tech frameworks is really radical for biotech. So like I, could, I definitely resonate with that whole like top down hierarchy. And the only reason why it exists in biotech is because that's how we've always done it. And that's, there's no like questioning about it. Um, there, you know, maybe there are some leaders here and there, but that's, it's really interesting that you bring that up of being more bottom up approach in your organization. That, that's something I definitely want to strive for being more um, of like a co-design approach, I guess. From the community. Yeah. Well, maybe in terms of you know, in the last five minutes here, this could be an opportunity for some live um, iteration on the next session. So, you know, based on what we've been talking about today, or other some of the other past events, if you if folks have joined past of the crowdcast, what what else is coming up for you? Like, where would you like to see this series itself goes? Or like, a, like I'd really love it if we talked about X on the next session or, you know, directionally we're moved towards X. So I don't know if Isabella Chuck or other, anyone um, in the chat would love your thoughts or comments. 
before we break. Maybe I'll call on Isla. <laughs> Or Chuck, you, you look like you're I, about to speak. I have a notion, but well, yeah, and I, again, I, I would just want to be mindful of taking up space here. Um, the, I, I know that's something we're starting to talk about and I'd love to hear like a broader conversation on, you know, and again, because really trusting the, these conversations y'all and the spaces y'all hold, um, like what, what does, what does like a national platform or even let's start regional like what is what does a regional platform for like a just economy look like right i think it's it's that there's so many ideas out there um so many folks are already doing the work like on on the ground but if we if we don't have a, i guess a, like a, a a platform and maybe that's just like the just transition you know framework is like is that is that it you know but like how do we actually advocate on the level of like public policy so that we can change the rules of the game um then then it's it it just becomes a lot less clear like where we're going so I, i'd love to hear you know folks even just uh talk about you know what does what does the rules of a new of the next economy look like and then can we find a way to actually advocate for policies that will make that make that real. Hmm. Yeah. Putting that in the chat just so we capture it. Yeah, I think to build on Chuck, I think that came up in the last session too, of just like if if it's a if it's a bottom-up approach, I and mean, when there's a lot of different organizations, how do we come together cohesively? And I, I guess it's just this question of like someone has to start something right but then step back into a support role and is that a series of meetings is it an organization that works as a hub is it a digital platform like what does that look like hmm. and I, I guess another question is is someone already trying to do this Yeah, that was one thing we wanted to make sure we were capturing is like, who are the groups that have maybe already thought about this? So we're not reinventing the wheel. Um, but we haven't found one that's like, oh, they're definitely, there's this group called the New Economy Coalition that some of you may have heard of, which is like the meta organization of organizations like B Lab and conscious capitalism and social entrepreneurship. So there is like that, but um, so maybe we'll get them on one of the future shows. Um, yeah, and and here in San Diego, um, Tory Project, the founder Dave Farron, is writing a book in collaboration with several different universities across the U.S. Doing research on why, like, what is holding the movement of movements back. So it might be yeah. interesting to get, you know, maybe some of their insights. I don't know how far in the research they are yet. Love that. Yeah. That. What was the name of the person you just mentioned, Isabel? Well? Dave, uh, David Farron at Tory Project. Oh, at Tory Project. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely have to follow up on that one. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, Chuck. Maybe. Just the last, well, why I keep saying the last thing. Uh, just that, because like I'm seeing a lot of uh, like amazing organizations, right? And like, like Kevin's, you know, shouting out a lot of great groups too. And uh, I think something we're also really trying to be mindful of is uh you know the amazing organizing groups like like moving for black lives right and like the domestic workers alliance and things like that like folks who aren't uh in, in my experience necessarily part of these conversations too and like maybe because we're always thinking like this economic you know lens or, or whatever but like the work that they're doing is absolutely critical right to any kind of justice like that there is no there is no economic justice without racial justice, without gender justice, you know, like none of that's possible without it. So um, how do we start having more intentional uh, groups where, where those folks are, are also are holding space and, and telling us what a just economy looks like? Yeah, that's wonderful. That. Cool, well, I see we're at our time. So, um, you know, one of the cool things about Crowdcast is we can actually continue the conversation after the live stream is ended. So if folks want to add stuff in the chat, groups you're involved with, um, you know, thoughts or ideas for the next session, we'd love to hear it. Um, but, you know, thanks again to everyone. 
Um, Isabel, Chuck, Allison, thanks for coming up on stage. <laughs> Sometimes last minute without giving you much warning. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we really appreciate it and we'll see you again. So we have two, uh, the next, just to say, our next sessions coming up are um, July 4th. We might have to change that one, Andrew. Um, but uh, that's te technically when the next one is. So how about we'll, we'll email everyone um, about that one and then the following one is, is July 28th. So I um, want to appreciate you all and uh, have a great, I think it's maybe July 7th. I think it's just written incorrectly in my notes. That would be the I believe it's, the, it's the 7th. Yeah. yeah, July 7th. So never mind, just July 7th. <laughs> um, all right, everyone. Well, thanks again for joining and we'll hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Ryan. Right. Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, Isabel. Thanks, Allison. <laughs>